Possibilities of Prayer by E.M. Bounds. Forward. Edward McHenry Bounds, like Wesley, was the practical mystic, the most formidable and terrible of all spiritual combinations. With an unceasing communion with God, he united an unfailing interest in the warfare of his fellows. The teachings he set forth in this, as in his former books, formed the only efficient barrier against the powers of evil, which appear to prevail throughout the present world. With bounds, prayer was paramount. It linked man with God, and human weakness with the power of the overcoming sun. Dr. P. F. Haynes of Nashville, Tennessee, who was converted to the ministry of Edward Bounds, wrote in 1913. Our first sight of this great saint was at the close of the Civil War, when he was dropped into a village in Tennessee with his uniform on. We remember how our childish minds were particularly taken with the gray jeans jacket closely buttoned with its brilliant brass buttons. He took charge of our little Methodist church. We remember with what soul-stirring pathos and fevers he read those old classic hymns, such as Majestic Sweetness Sits Enthroned. The Possibilities of Prayer by Ian Bounds. Chapter 1. The Ministry of Prayer. Prayer should be the breath of our breathing, the thought of our thinking, the soul of our feeling, the life of our living, the sound of our hearing, and growth of our growing. Prayer in its magnitude is length without end, width without bounds, height without top, and depth without bottom, illimitable in its breath, exhaustless in height, fathomless in depth, and infinite in extension. Homer W. Hodge the ministry of prayer has been the peculiar distinction of all of God's saints. This has been the secret of their power. The energy and the soul of their work has been the closet. The need of help outside of man being so great, man's natural inability to always judge kindly, justly, and truly, and to act in the golden rule, so prayer is enjoined by Christ to enable man to act in all these things according to the divine will. By prayer, the ability is secured to feel the law of love, to speak according to the law of love, and to do everything in harmony with the law of love. God can help us. God is a Father. We need God's good things to help us do, quote, do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before God, unquote. We need divine aid to act brotherly, wisely, nobly, and to judge truly and charitably. God's help to do all these things in God's way is secured by prayer. Quote, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Not and it shall be open unto you, unquote. In the marvelous output of Christian graces and duties, the results of giving ourselves wholly to God, recorded in the 12th chapter of Romans, we have the words, quote, continuing instant in prayer, unquote preceded by, quote, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, unquote, followed by, quote, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality, unquote. Paul thus writes, as if these rich and rare graces and unselfish duties, so sweet, bright, generous, and unselfish, had for their center and source the ability to pray. This is the same word which is used in the prayer of the disciples which ushered in Pentecost with all its rich and glorious blessings of the Holy Spirit. In Colossians, Paul presses the word into the service of prayer again. Quote, continue in prayer <clears throat> and watch and stand with thanksgiving, end quote. The word in its background and root means strong, the ability to stay and persevere steadfast, so to hold fast and firm, to give constant attention to. In Acts chapter 6, it is translated, quote, give ourselves continually to prayer, unquote. There is in it constancy, courage, unfainting perseverance. It means giving such marked attention to 
in such deep concern to a thing as will make it conspicuous and controlling. This is an advance in demand on, quote, continue, unquote. Prayer is to be incessant, without intermission, um, arduously, no check and desire, in spirit or in act, the spirit in the life always in the attitude of prayer. The knees may not always be bent, the lips may not always be vocal with words of prayer, but the spirit is always in the act and in the course of prayer. There ought to be no adjustment of life or spirit for closet hours. The closet spirit should sweetly rule and adjust all times and occasions. Our activities and work should be performed in the same spirit, which makes our devotion and which makes our closet time sacred. Quote, without intermission, incessantly, assiduously, unquote, describes an opulence and energy, an unabated and sensual strength and fullness of effort like the full and exhaustless and spontaneous flow of an artisan stream. Touch the man of God who thus understands prayer at any time, at any point, and a full current of prayer is seen flowing from him. But all these untold benefits of which the Holy Spirit is made to us the conveyor go back in their disposition and results to prayer. Not on a little process, and a mere performance of prayer is the coming of the Holy Spirit and of His great grace conditioned, but on prayer set on fire by an unquenchable desire with such a sense of need as cannot be denied, with a fixed determination which will not let go, and which will never faint till it wins the greatest good and gets the best and the last blessing God has in store for us. The first Christ, Jesus, our great high priest, for the blessed and adored be his name, was a gracious comforter, a faithful guide, a gifted teacher, a fearless advocate, a devoted friend, and an all-powerful intercessor. The other, quote, another comforter, unquote, the Holy Spirit, comes into all these blessed relations of fellowship, authority, and aid, with all the tenderness, sweetness, fullness, and efficiency of the first Christ. Was the first Christ the Christ of prayer? Did he offer prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto God? Did he seek the silence, the solitude, and the darkness, that he might pray unheard and unwitnessed, saved by heaven, in his wrestling agony for men, with God, does he ever live, enthroned above, at the Father's right hand, there to pray for us? Then how, truly, does the other Christ, the other Comforter, the Holy Spirit, represent Jesus Christ as the Christ to pray? This other Christ, the Comforter, plants himself not in the waste of the mountain, nor far into the night, but in the chill and the night of the human heart, to rouse it to, to the struggle and to teach it the need and form of prayer. How the, the divine comforter, the spirit of truth, puts into the human heart the burden of earth's almighty need and makes the human lips give voice to its mute and unutterable groanings. What a mighty Christ of prayer is the Holy Spirit. How he quenches every flame in the heart but the flame of heavenly desire how he quiets like a winged child all the self will in chill, in will, in brain and in heart and by mouth we pray only as he prays quote, making intercession for the saints according to the will of God unquote. 